Okay, so uh, today today we'll be talking about model fitting. Uh, it's kind of a next topic, but we'll see that it is quite related to what we were already doing till now. So till now, for example, we were actually detecting edges and feature points, and uh, the purpose of detecting edges and feature points was we would, we would apply it for some higher purpose. It's not that just detecting edges is sufficient. After detecting edges, we may want to fit boundaries to get the object shape. Or after extracting features, we would like to match them and find the alignment matrix and so on. So uh, to do all that, there were some problems that we encountered. We discussed last time, for example, when we are matching features, there may be some out, uh, some wrong matches, and to deal with them is not so easy. We saw some local method to do that, uh, some heuristic-based method that the David Low in his SIF paper used to solve that. But today we will be talking about a general technique of model fitting, and we'll see that uh, that general technique actually can solve many of these problems of feature matching, recognition, and fitting uh, boundaries on edges and so on. So as we will, uh, so for just to start with what we were doing earlier in the last class, we were basically detecting features for for the purpose of aligning two images, and we saw in the first step we will basically extract features, either using Harris corner or these shift uh, features, and then we would uh, match those features based on their descriptors. Now, the problem was, as we said, that some of the features may get matched with the correct uh, corresponding feature point, but there may be some features, so for example, here, for example, this feature point, let me change the color. So, for example, this point here is getting matched to this point here, which is quite reasonably wrong. Uh, so you, so most of the matches are uh, from here, they are going to in that direction. So that seems to be all right. But some of these matches are going in the reverse direction or opposite direction, which, which would be wrong. Our algorithm has given that match, but which would be wrong. And if we tend to, so for example, now if we, if we, if we use this match in our estimation of the transformation matrix, our estimation will come out to be incorrect. So somehow we have to tolerate these uh, wrong matches in our application. So in the last class, we saw some simple heuristic that some thresholding based method and matching the patch around the descriptors that uh, the SIFT paper used. But again, that is not so robust. Uh, that is a basically a local measure. There can be some global uh, solutions for this where we can use the global uh, data set or the global set of features to come up with the right, right match. And this class basically will be talking about those global techniques. But just to give you an idea, for example, in this, in this specific uh, problem of feature based alignment problem, we could actually do this something like this, for example, we can pick some of these, uh, we can arbitrarily choose any of, so out of, let us say we had 50 pairs of matches. Let us say we had total 50 pairs of uh, matches that we got. Out of those 50, uh, we may need six pairs for estimating our transformation matrix, let us say, so we can arbitrarily choose some six uh, matches. And based on that, we can uh, solve solve the transformation matrix using those six matches. So using the x y coordinates of these here and the x y coordinates of these here, we know how to do that. We discussed earlier how to estimate the transformation matrix. We have to basically solve the linear linear uh, set of equations and uh, using li li using least square uh, minimization uh, solving, we can actually do get this transformation matrix. So. Um, we can uh, arbitrarily choose any any uh, six, let us say, pairs. From that, we can get one transformation matrix. Now, whether that transformation matrix is correct or not, how do we know? 
we can try to do a verification with the other set of features what does this mean basically using this transformation matrix let us try to find out how many other matches are consistent with this transformation so once we know the transformation matrix now let us say this this match was getting matched to this one so we apply the transformation matrix to this and see whether that is actually coming close to this uh, match or not if it is coming close that means this uh, this match is consistent with this transformation matrix t so we can find out how many of such matches are being consistent with the the t that we are getting and keep account of that let us say if that is low we can do a loop. we can run again this thing we can again randomly choose another set of pairs again find out a new t matrix and count how many of the matches are consistent with that t matrix and we can keep on doing it till we are happy in the sense till we have found <coughs> maximum features maximum count of features which are consistent with that transformation matrix t so that is kind of a global method of ensuring that we are coming up with a estimation which is uh, robust against uh, outliers or wrong matches so only 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 if the transform only if the the set of the features that we have chosen is is correct then only the transformation matrix t is going to be consistent with the maximum other matches if it is a random set then it won't be consistent with other matches so that is the basic idea how we can use uh, the global uh, data set or the global set of features to come up uh, to handle these problems that we encounter in real life so this is after you find out the best match you can do the transformation and do the aligning but that is not what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss a general technique which is based on some mathematics and some algorithm steps of fitting a parametric model so given a set of data points that data points can be your edge points or it can be your set of feature points that we detected using shift and all that we may want to fit a parametric model that we are assuming holds in the sense what is parametric model it's basically it can be a simple uh, it can be a basically an equation which represents a class of uh, object shapes or set of instances for example it can be simple straight lines or it can be a circle or it can be some arbitrary parameter arbitrary shape uh, curve which can be parameterized uh, in some sense with some so in this case we we need slope and intercept for the line here we need the center and the radius as a parameter and maybe this arbitrary shape also can have some parameter so if we can define a model which we hope which we assume that should hold in the given uh image or in given set of data points we may try to fit this model on the extracted edge points or the extracted features and how we will fit that the process of fitting model will basically involve some kind of an optimization method where we will try to estimate the parameters of that uh, model such that the fitting error is minimized so we'll compute some kind of a fitting error and we'll try to minimize so the model which gives the least fitting error that will choose as our best uh, model which re will represent the observed set of data points so let us see some examples to make it more uh, clear what we are trying to do so take some examples so, so for example we may want to do simple line fitting so this example we showed you in the introduction class in fact this was the problem that we gave as a mini project last time when i ran this course so we basically i uh, the problem was to basically extract uh, data from a tabular uh, image image which has a, a table kind of a pattern so for example this our answer sheet has this kind of a pattern so we may want to extract the marks for some purpose i'll talk about that later on but the idea here is we we will i uh, will do some edge detection but edge detection is not sufficient we'll have to find out these uh, lines of our table so we'll have we'll see how we can do that or you may want to fit lines on uh, to find out the boundary of a building like here or we may want to fit line on the roads or the side maps so for either for navigation purpose or whatever or uh, we may want to fit line on this ic chip so just to know whether the chip has been placed correctly at the right location or not so there are different applications where we may want to do simple line fitting 
the problem of line fitting is so we may think that we have we already if we if we run an edge detector then it should give us line if you simply run an edge detector like a sobel uh, not sobel any or whatever it will give uh, the edge points and will is that not sufficient can't we get a line from that yeah so it will have it will have each and every small it is uh, but what is the problem so can't we find out from them which are straight lines so what is the problem being highlighted here as you see the there will be noise in the sense uh, the noise uh, the the pixels may not uh, get aligned in a straight line they may be little bit the locations uh, the positions of the pixels can be little bit uh, displaced from their actual uh, location or there may be a missing part the line may not be because as we said edge detection does not ensure that it is going to give you a continuous edge is a local property whereas a boundary or a line is kind of a global thing and uh, there is no uh, no constraint imposed while we are doing editing edges that the edge should be a closed edge so we may have broken edges or we may have a missing part here parts of the line may be missing and and you can see there may be extra there may be clutter for example here we have a lot of clutters that we have to get rid of to and uh, and so on orientations may be slightly zigzag and so on there may be multiple lines and so on so there are several difficulties there are fresh uh, problems which need to be addressed in order to find out clearly fit uh, unique lines in these locations and so on so how can we do that we we'll see another example let us say this is the same example of aligning two images so one image object from one viewpoint this is an uh, Im image of the same object from another viewpoint and we may do some feature detections here and we got this set of features here and similar set of features here and we may do an um, feature matching and then find estimate our transformation matrix t or h here whatever we have written here and then we 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 can actually do the transformation but again the problem that we have already highlighted talked about this again the problem is if there is even one incorrect match the incorrect match is being shown here in blue if there is only even one incorrect match and if we take that into account while estimating our transformation matrix our transformation matrix will be totally uh, different than what is the real thing so we need to so while uh, while using our observed data points we need to somehow handle these outliers if there are some outliers or wrong matches somehow our technique should be able to should be robust against those outliers so in the previous case we said we should be it should be robust against some noise or some missing points and so on in this case this is another exa example of uh, handling wrong matches which we are terming as outliers and this is the last example that i am going to talk a more general uh, application we may want to fit a general 3d object template for example we may know we may design an a uh, model of a car using its different parts it should have a wheel somewhere here two wheels and then window somewhere here and then bonnet here and back somewhere and have some kind of a graph relationship some arbitrary template and when then we given a new given an observed uh, image of a car and feature patches detector from there we may try to match these things and find out whether this is actually a car or not so this is a kind of a recognition or a matching problem again this is something similar to a data fitting problem that we are talking about uh, the problem here as we can see will see that if the viewpoints is quite different then some some of the patches may not at all be visible or they may be occluded by some other object in the scene so while while fitting our data 
we have to also handle this problem of occlusions when some part of the data is occluded still we should be able to solve these problems in a more robust fashion so what i am saying is that this uh, uh, we will see that in our discussion that the problem of fitting feature matching and recognition they are somehow some in some way interconnected problems if we solve one problem other problems can be solved in a similar way so these are kind of as we have seen based on our discussion till now we have seen that these are kind of an interconnected problems so our focus now will be on finding how to fit a parametric model given a set of data points that is a general problem for which we will like to see what are the techniques for doing this <clears throat> so we'll be choosing a parametric model which we will assume that uh, that is there in the image and it can be a line circle parabola ellipse or even any general template parameterized template the challenge is, is that the data that we'll see that the features or the edge points that we'll see will suffer with all these problems in real life scenario there will be occlusions there will be noise there will be ambiguity or wrong matches and so on so our technique should somehow be able to handle these outliers we will we we'll call all of them as an outlier so the goal of a robust uh, fitting method should be that we should be able to handle this tolerate these outliers so that is our aim and something to note is that uh, while fitting this thing we have to see that the membership criteria will not be local so this fitting method should be a global method because and this actually uh, will work to our, to our advantage because even if some part of the data is occluded or is missing because we will be looking in a, in a global sense our method will not fail even if some part of the data is occluded or is missing because the membership criteria is not local so we'll have to we cannot just looking at a uh, uh, looking at a one edge point or one set of features we cannot decide about the parameter uh, about the model that is going to fit we have to see, see in a global sense and the last thing that we have to keep into mind is the computational complexity while fitting while using our technique what our technique that we are going to take we have to see what is the computational complexity involved both in terms of memory as well as space because one brute brute force approach can be very simple you can examine all we can take all subsets of uh, feature points and uh, do an exhaustive search what this means maybe let, let just give you this next thing to explain what we, what we understand so for example you are given these let us say few edge points and you are asked to identify how many lines are there and where are they what will you do and what will be the answer So what is the answer? Hmm? Two, three, four, even one. So there are many possible answers. And the thing is actually there are different possibilities. So you may draw, for example, there may be one part of the line here. There may be another part of the line here. And maybe there will be a third line somewhere going here. Or you can actually, you can think that these are not two different lines. There is a single line. 
which is probably going through all this point here and there is a single line which is going through all these parts here so uh, the answer is that yeah there is no single answer here there may be two three and whatever but what is the approach that you use to figure out this have you just visualized it or what will be the algorithm that you will use to figure out this so we choose any two points so if there are n if there are n such data points how many possible combinations will be there n c2 so that will be order of n square and then for each line he said she said we'll have to see how every other point whether it is lying on that line or close to that line or not so there are total n number of lines and if you compare with every lines such that then it will become n cube so that is a valid method but it is a brute force method and that will take around uh, the compression complexity will be of order of n cube just for this simple problem at least n cube uh, operations will be needed so can we do something more efficient so that is our uh, going to be our discussion so first we will see some uh, simple mathematical uh, methods of uh, doing a global optimization using the least square fit method uh, just to set the background but then actually we'll use we'll come to discuss some uh, algorithms which are based on a voting procedure and these are two famous algorithm half transform and ransack and uh, these are most oftenly used to solve these problems we'll see how, why and what what are the pros and cons of these algorithms uh, but we'll start with a simple uh, lean uh, simple solution of doing a least square fit problem so for example taking the simplest case of line fitting so if you have a data point all the data points and data points with x1 y1 x2 y2 their uh, locations and we want to fit a single line let us say right now we'll only assume there is a single line so the parameter uh, parametric model of that single line will be of y is equal to mx plus b and if all of them ideally all if all of them we are trying we are trying to fit a single line for all of them then this line should satisfy each of these points so to fit that line we will have to now uh do uh, do some kind of a minimize we have to do some kind of a minimization problem optimization problem so what we can do basically we can try to minimize this error so if we when if we uh, so our parameters are slope and the intercept that we need to figure out and if we sub, if you play if we fit each and every point xi comma yi on this line and if we put in this line so the diff, the uh, uh, whatever is the residual error if we sum up across all n points this is our total residual error so the best fit line should have this error as minimum isn't it so haven't you tried haven't you done similar things long back in your physics experiments and all that time many times most of those experiments needed you to fit a the th theory would say that you will get a straight line for example when you did the pendulum experiment or whatever but when you actually experimented you never got a straight line your data points would all be little bit here and there and then you will actually do a best fit line you have to draw a best fit line and you basically try to minimize the error while fitting those lines in fact actually the same thing happens in image processing also whatever in theory class what will tell if you try to apply in your lab <laughs> most of they won't work uh, so straight forwardly so you will have to basically adjust the parameters and things lot of error in there to make it work so something similar here that we are trying to do here so why we are calling it is a least square line fitting so i'm trying to take a square of this 
so because that this uh, if the point is above it probably the distance the, the error will be plus the point is below the error will be negative so i, I am not concerned about the sign so i'll take this square to get rid of the sign i could have taken the absolute value but then we'll see the problem with the, taking the absolute value is we cannot do a derivation on uh, we cannot take a derivative of that so we take a square of this and uh, so what i'm uh, so i try to uh, reduce this expression in in uh, in for uh, in uh, terms of matrix so that we can actually use the linear algebra to solve it so uh, this summation operation so i'm I, i'll just i can rearrange this so that i can get all our parameters in one vector and the data points in another vector so now this summation also i can uh, get rid of by kind of doing a matrixizing operation here so i'm so if you replace all the points here in one vector and the x coordinate in the other matrix and mb is your another vector which is your so we need to uh, so our error is basically a norm of y vector minus x vector so the y vector is basically this and our x matrix is this matrix and our h matrix h vector is this uh, parameters that we want to solve so uh, we can expand it so this norm can be expanded using our linear algebra we can get this expression now to uh, the one which will minimize this error how to find out how to solve for h which which will minimize this error hmm we differentiate this e with respect to h and equate it to 0 so we'll differentiate this equation or this error d e with respect to dh so what we get is something this you can verify it and we'll equate it to 0 so what will it will give this will give basically this and then finally our h parameters will be we'll take an inverse so this is a is x transpose x x itself is not a square matrix but x transpose x will be a square matrix so it can be inversed we can take this inverse and this is any this kind of a pseudo inverse this is something similar that we did while while we were trying to solve this transformation matrix so something same here so it's a, it's a standard least square fitting thing so it will if you solve this you will get the the parameters m and n b which which best fits the given set of data points so you don't have to do nc2 combinations here so it is good in terms of computation complexity you can straight away uh, generate these mat uh, these matrices of x and y and solve this uh, pseudo inverse thing and you will get the solution hmm. or we'll take all the points so yeah so the pro this problem that this advantage with this method is it can only fit one model or one instance of the model so one line only it can fit so it cannot fit all the points so that that is the that is the problem with this or you may have to do it iteratively if you want to fit multiple models so that's why it's not the best method it's just the beginning we'll see some better better method as we move forward uh even this uh, this uh, least square fitting is is has some problem here it will have a problem with vertical lines it will fail for vertical lines because for vertical lines our slope m is going to tend to infinity and that will be a problem here and another problem will be here so when your line is for example almost vertical if our point is even little bit here so hey in this case here we were actually in a kind of we were minimizing the y intercept we were actually minimizing the the uh, the distance that point is away from the line in the y direction the now the problem with now the problem is if the line is almost vertical or close to vertical then if a if a point is even little bit away its y intercept will become very large 
and that will be so if you are trying to minimize the y intercept uh, you will end up with a wrong uh, fitting so ideally what you should do you should try to minimize the perpendicular distance from the line instead of minimizing the y intercept so we can so we can for that we can modify our line equation so we can use this set of uh, this equation for our line instead of the slope intercept form we can use uh, this uh, this is another way to represent a straight line where d is the perpendicular distance of the origin from the uh, from the line uh, and a and b are other parameters so we now we'll have three parameters instead of two parameters but we can actually again do the similar uh, least square fitting here but this will actually try to minimize the perpendicular distance so even if your line is vertical and all that it doesn't matter you will be able to solve this thing how this method fits so there are disadvantages for this method one method, one disadvantage was that it cannot fit multiple models uh, how it will perform for noise so if your point are little bit if the if the points if there is only little bit noise in the sense your your pixels or your features are displaced with certain normal distribution or a gaussian distribution so then in that case uh, your fitting will uh, this method actually tends to perform well it can handle a uh, little bit gaussian distribution noise with small sigma but if there is a very if, a, if there is a uh, totally out of uh, there is an outlier which is not which is kind of a non gaussian noise so for example in this case this point is kind of a totally outlier point so now on this data set if we try to fit a line instead of instead of getting this line we will actually get a this line why it will get we'll get this line because we were uh, remember we are trying to minimize the square error uh, so when we are trying to minimize square error error so the point which is so if for this line this uh, the square of this distance error will be too much which will tend to penalize this line instead of this we will try to get this line because our as we as we are moving away from there the, the error is getting squared so because of this doing this squaring operation there is a heavy penalization so that that causes this problem uh, of non robustness against uh, this non gaussian noise we can try it. there is a trick to handle that also we can have some kind of a robust estimator what is this robust estimator so the problem was the squared error was problematic in the previous case so instead of doing a squared error we could have taken just an absolute value but the problem with using absolute value was we could not do a derivation derivative thing d by dh will be a problem it will be hard to minimize an absolute function so instead we can use another function which is called a robust norm a kind of this function u square upon sigma square plus u square where u square is the square is the is the this residual error and sigma is the scale factor which will help us to uh, tolerate this outliers so what it basically is doing this kind of function will take this kind of a curve what it says as long as your residual error is low as long as the residual error is low your your this function behaves like a square function but as after some point after some point beyond this if your residual error increases it just saturates it just flats uh, flattens it out so it is not going to penalize too much even if your distance is very far if the point is right very and located very far from these things the problem was in the previous case this this uh, this uh, this noise was this was getting this was basically penalizing this thing because the distance was getting squared now here because after some point is going to anyhow saturate it it is not going to go and uh, go on increasing with the square factor so this kind of uh, for robust estimator can deal with those uh, non gaussian noise also provided we choose a good scale factor sigma so again 
so if we school the, if we choose the sigma the sigma should be so as as per the residual sigma should be almost comparable to the residual error if it is too less than this then it becomes uh, basically this gets uh, numerator is also u square denominator is also nu square it basically this there will be no effect of doing an estimation here if sigma is too dominant than u square then it will behave again like a uh, squared function so the effect uh, of this i am just going to show here so if you choose if you choose the scale right that is if you choose the sigma value correct then it is able to tolerate this outlier it will neglect this and it will still fit the best fit line on the the effect of the outlier is minimized but if we choose the sigma very low then basically uh, 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 the fit will be very poor because the error value will almost be the same for every every point whether it is this point this point or any random point your error value will be almost the same for each and every point so your fit will be any random fit it won't actually do the right thing and as we said if we choose sigma too large our fitting will be the same as the least square fitting it will tend up to go nearer to the outlier so these are some simple methods mathematical methods to do of line fitting you can do probably it can be extended for square fitting and other uh, for circle fitting and other general curves also but there are many limitations with this problem it is not so robust to noise and outliers and does not fit multiple models so do we have some better methods so we'll see some algorithmic algorithmic method to do that and the first method that with this these are all basically voting based method i'm just going to tell you um, a bit about more voting procedure and then give you a little bit 5 minutes break uh before continuing on to the half transform so what is basically voting uh, procedure um as we said in the brute force approach we we'll we may have to check all possible combinations all possible subsets of feature points against each uh, parametric model and try to do a fitting but that is not computationally feasible so in a voting basically basically what we do in fact this is this kind of a general technique in computer vision which is employed very often is basically uh, in this case for example what we'll do for each data point or each feature point we'll uh, we'll see uh, we'll try to each feature point or each edge point will cast a vote against a particular model how it will be done that will explain in that detail will become clear but the procedure will be will each point will cast a vote for one particular model and we'll keep on doing this for all, all every feature points and keep on counting the votes so it's just like electing electing the leader so basically everyone will uh, put cast its vote and the one which gets the maximum vote or or the maximum number uh, or all the largest vote we'll choose that as the best fit so we'll cycle through each feature we'll cast uh, each feature will cast vote for the model parameters and then we'll look for that model parameter which received the maximum votes so that is the general voting procedure which is done in anything same thing is here also and why it will work in this case how how the the exact mechanism will differ whether we are doing ransack or whether we are doing half transform uh, but before we just go into the details uh, why voting procedure will work why it will be able to tall it will be robust against outliers so uh, which are which are our good features or which are basically the right edge points or the feature points they are going to consistently vote for the particular model which is actually existing there whereas those are those which are outliers they will cast vote for some some random parameters so when we are going to count the max value max value will come for the those uh, models which are actually existing or the best the lines which are actually existing not the ones which are random things and also if some features are not observed this will still work for example if there are there is an occlusion some features some 
some people became ill and they did not come they did not turn up for voting um so of course here it will matter in this case probably uh, but in in this case we'll see because our uh, the the model that we are trying to fit uh, is is a kind of a global model so even if some part of some local regions of that model is missing still we'll be able to get enough counts from the remaining part will we be able to get the enough number of counts from the remaining part even if some part is occluded 